Hello everyone and welcome to the Civilization Overview for the Lithuanians. The Lithuanians are yet another new AoE2 civilization that has arrived with Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition. This video will break down the tech tree and I will speculate just how this civilization will be played out in game. Let's get to it. The Lithuanians are listed as a cavalry and monk civilization. Like most of these new civilizations, they have a lot of strengths that need to be discussed. First off, they begin the game with an additional 150 food. This is similar to a bonus that the Persians get, where they start with plus 50 food and wood. Only in my opinion, this is way stronger and gives you even more flexibility with build orders. Let's say you're playing on Nomad and you don't have food. Well, you have three extra villagers for free, and those villagers could simply chop wood for your fishing economy. Or maybe you're playing Arabia, and you want to go for an early drush or fast feudal. Well, you're going to have the food banked up to work with. This also means it's probably a good sieve for beginners, as Age of Empires 2 build orders take time to practice, and many times people who are new to the game struggle to get the food income to create villagers at all times. Moving on to the next bonus, their spearmen line and skirmishers move 10% faster. So their spears won't move quite as fast as Celt spearmen, who move 15% faster, but 10% is still pretty quick. On top of that, their skirmishers can run along with them. This is pretty awesome, as the weakness of trash units has always been the lack of mobility. With faster skirmishers and spears, enemy archers and knights will have to steer clear of the Lithuanians. To go even more in depth on what this would do to affect the game, the normal counter to a lot of pikes and skirmishers would be siege like scorpions and mackinels. Well this is a monk civilization, so it'd be an easy counter to use redemption monks to convert that enemy siege. They get access to every single monastery tech and their monasteries work 20% faster. This sounds like the new King of Arena so far, as a monk trash siege push would be very, very hard to stop. And on the topic of monks, when Lithuanians garrison relics, it gives plus one attack to the cavalry units. This is capped out at an extra five attack, sorry relic nothing players, but that means their unique and stable units will benefit from this. They have a lot of firepower. We'll work our way through the tech tree so this makes a little bit more sense. Starting off with the archer range, Lithuanians do not get access to Arbalest, but do get hand cannoneers, heavy cab archer, including thumbring and Parthian tactics, and of course their faster skirmishers. I don't really foresee crossbow or cab archer being the best long-term unit choice for this civ, as it'd make more sense to have a mix of skirmishers and pikes until you make a transition to something else. And if you want to transition to infantry, the options are there. Lithuanians can get everything from the barracks with champion and halberdier, and the new supplies technology showing up again. This means those speedy spears can become Usain Bolt halberdiers further down the line. In the stable, this sieve gets Hussar and Paladin, so another building with no limitations. Keep in mind that with their garrisoned relic bonus, these cavalry units could have some insane attack. Paladins already have 14 plus 4 with full upgrades. Well, that could turn into Paladins with 14 plus 9 attack. It's crazy strong, and combined with the other bonuses the Civ has, I have to say this seems extremely overpowered like most of the new civilization so far. With all of these strengths, it does make sense that their siege would be handicapped a bit. They only get Handicapped Ram, no Siege Ram, and they do not get Siege Onager or Heavy Scorpion. Having access to Bombard Cannon is very nice though, and it's probably a unit that they could tie into the Monk Trash style pushes I've mentioned might be possible on Arena. In the Blacksmith, they have all technologies except for Plate Mail Armor, which is for their infantry. This will make their Champion and Halberdiers pretty weak, but I'll soon mention the unique tech they have that can make up for this in some ways. Since they have access to Bracer and Chemistry, their naval options are pretty dang good. 
With Fast Fire Ship and Galleon, Elite Cannon Galleon, you can definitely put up a fight with the Lithuanians if the seas get rough. Lacking Heavy Demolition Ship will hurt against Strong Fire Ship civilizations, but they can hold their own. Their university is loaded, and they are only missing Aeroslits and Siege Engineers. Lacking Siege Engineers could be a slight inconvenience, but again, this Civ isn't huge with Siege anyway. Their focus is going to be on other forms of land aggression. And with strong land aggression, a player needs strong economy, and the Lithuanians miss out on gold shaft mining. Personally, I've always felt this tech has been underrated by a lot of people in the AoE2 community. I know that Tato, a pro player from Spain, uh, has said to give Teutons gold shaft mining and it would make a huge difference for them. So my instinct is to say that this could make life awkward for the Lithuanians, but then it's quite possible that they will have the relics and lots of speedy trash units, so maybe they'll be fine. The Castle Age unique tech for the Lithuanians is called Hill Forts. This gives town centers an additional 3 range and will do even more to defend against raids throughout the economy. It also gives a great meme strategy for the lulls, but I wouldn't recommend it. It didn't work out too well for Dave, just don't tell him that I uploaded this please. The Imperial Age unique tech is called Tower Shields, and this gives plus 1 pierce armor to the spear and skirmisher line. So while the Lithuanians do not get the final armor upgrade for infantry, this tech sort of makes up for it with their halberdiers, and it ends up giving their skirmishers more pierce armor. It will be extremely tough to finish off this Civ. They have the faster trash units, they have extra armor on the trash units, they get virtually every option to fortify from within the university. They have the faster monasteries, the relic attack bonus on Cav, and then the unique unit. The unique unit for the Lithuanians is called the Latis, and I'm probably butchering that, <laughs> but uh, too late. It is a unique cav unit with attack that ignores armor. Pretty unique. It is strong versus, you guessed it, armored units, and it is also more resistant to monks. This unit is kind of a wild card for me. The way I look at it is, Paladins are an extremely strong unit, and Paladins can be created out of stables, which is much easier to do. Lithuanians get fully upgraded Paladins, so I would assume the best time to use this latest is where Paladins would be ineffective, and that would be against Halberdier and Camel. I ran some extremely basic tests for now, and I don't see this unit trading any better than Paladins do versus these units. First, I had tested 20 Paladins versus 20 Imperial Camels from the Indians, and 6 Camels remained after the fight. I then did the same thing with 20 Latis, and 6 Camels remained as well. Next, I tested 20 Paladins versus 20 Indian Halberdiers, 15 Paladins remained after the fight. I again ran the test with 20 Latis versus 20 Halbs, and 15 of these seemingly out-of-place unique units were left. It was the exact same. Now, I didn't spend a lot of time doing this test, and just for clarity, I had no relic attack bonus to take advantage of during these fights, and Indian Halbs aren't the strongest out there, but I think it's safe to assume these units trade evenly versus what counter Paladins, and Paladins are going to do a much better job against everything else. The one exception would be, if there are a lot of monks on the field, the unique unit does resist conversion, so maybe that would be a time to use it. But it's just so rare to see all-out monks versus a unit like this, so again, I don't see that being very helpful. So looking a bit deeper, I got to the topic of cost, and maybe there is something. Paladins cost 60 food and 75 gold, while the unique unit costs 50 food and 80 gold. So, the latest is more expensive to create. Hmm. Okay, stumped again. But at least the elite upgrade is 750 gold and 750 food, which is half the cost of upgrading to Cavalier and then Paladin. But I'm still unsure if it's worth it though, when you consider that to create unique units you need to mine thousands of stone, and you can only create them out of castles. Okay, so right now, I don't see any real reason to make the unique unit. 
but I'd love to be proven wrong in the months to come. The fact is, is that the Civ has so many incredible options that it doesn't need the unique unit. They have their monks, paladins and hussars with extra attack, armored trash units, and heavy fortifications. And even without the unique unit, it would still come in near the top of the AoE2 totem pole. Fortunately, I'll be casting and playing these civs to death, so I'm sure we'll all find out pretty soon. So guys, thanks for watching this quick AoE2 civilization overview. Make sure to click like if you enjoyed the video and to subscribe to the channel and toggle on alerts so you don't miss what's next. In addition to making Age of Empires 2 videos, I frequently stream Age of Empires 2 on my Twitch page. So if you have interest in stopping by, the link is below, and I'd love to see you. If you're lucky, I might even be live right now creating those beastly paladins. That's all for now, guys, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.